Hello, everyone, and welcome. Today, we're talking about high blood pressure. Last week, we discussed the importance of taking blood pressure correctly so that the readings are accurate. And today, we're going to discuss the specific lifestyle changes that reduce blood pressure, and we're going to compare them to medicines because understanding how lifestyle changes affect blood pressure can really help those who would like to reduce their dependence on medications. And so we're going to talk about that and compare both. You're listening to Connecting the Dots with Dr. Shai. I'm your host, Ola Shai. I'm a family medicine and lifestyle medicine doctor and owner of InTouch Primary Care in Sugarland, Texas. Here, we offer stress-free health care with direct access to the doctor so our patients can get the care they need without all the inconveniences and delay in the healthcare system. You can learn more about our services on our website, www.intouchprimarycare.com. And if you have not already, please press that subscribe button. That helps us get the word out. All right, so let's get into it. So there are non-drug methods to lower blood pressure. And the first one I'm going to talk about is a healthy diet. So food is medicine. And so by increasing the intake of whole food, plant-based foods, it really, that has been the biggest lifestyle behavior that has shown to lower blood pressure the most. This means adding a variety of fruits and vegetables, especially the dark green leafy vegetables. And that's because that contains a lot of nutrients, including potassium, which is helpful in lowering blood pressure. And when we say potassium, we're talking about dietary potassium, potassium from food, not potassium taken as a supplement. Also, whole grains and whole foods can help with, um, with that. It's in a balanced diet. Choosing whole grains and whole foods over processed carbs, especially, or processed foods in general. And then also removing things like meat, fish, poultry, and eggs. So that's a tall order for a lot of people. But especially meat and poultry does have, they do have saturated fat which increase the risk of inflammation in the body, which also increases the risk of um, cardiovascular diseases or heart, heart conditions like high blood pressure. So food is the biggest bang for your buck. And um, we already talked about, you know, adding fruits and vegetables. Fruits, ideally, we should shoot for about eight servings of fruit a day. So a lot of people say, oh yeah, I eat fruits all the time. That's a really tall order but it's doable to get eight servings of fruits. It's, it's, it's a tall order, especially with the way we eat these days. And getting nine servings of vegetables a day. So it's, it's you know, most of us have a lot of room for improvement, even if we're already doing somewhat well within that department. So just wanted to make sure that people understood how much we need to do <laughs> to get to, you know, the where we're trying to get to in terms of lowering blood pressure. So Again, adding a variety of fruits and vegetables, especially the dark green leafy vegetables, doing whole grains and whole foods rather than processed foods, and then trying to remove as much animal products as possible to reduce inflammation. So that's a big part of it. The other big part of diet that research has actually shown in terms of the number of points it reduces your blood pressure is a diet rich in potassium. So getting 3,500 to 5,000 of milligrams of potassium from food um, helps reduce the blood pressure by four points. Okay. So just by doing that, you reduce your blood pressure by four points. Also, when you limit your dietary sodium, so sodium, most of us are aware that sodium affects blood pressure. So reducing the sodium to three quarters of a teaspoon of salt the problem is most of the sodium that causes problems is not sodium from added salt. A lot of the problem is sodium from the um, processed foods. So a lot of foods can taste um, normal, may not even taste salty at all. For example, bread, you know, but it has a lot of sodium um, depending on the brand that you get. And then sometimes things are obvious like cheese and uh, pizza, things like that. But many times canned food, processed food, packaged foods have lots of sodium to preserve them and they may not even taste salty and so they hide. So reading labels can be very important. 
By limiting sodium to three quarters of a teaspoon of salt, you can lower your blood pressure by five to eight points. So by eating a diet rich in potassium, we said four points, dietary sodium, five to eight points. Weight loss, which is a byproduct of eating healthy in many cases, um, will also help with lowering um, your blood pressure. So for every one point of, um, of, of um, for every two pounds of weight that you lose, your blood pressure tends to go down by one point. So this is a long-term approach, but basically for someone that needs to lose weight or would like to lose weight and loses about 20 pounds, and um, you could drop your systolic blood pressure by five to 20 points. It just depends on how much weight is contributing to the blood pressure in each case. Okay, so that's the first thing, healthy diet affecting um, blood pressure, reducing by specific non number of points. The other thing that can reduce blood pressure is reducing alcohol. So men are rec recommended to reduce alcohol to less than two drinks a day for men and less than one drink a day for women. And that has been shown to reduce blood pressure by four to five points. So by limiting the amount of alcohol that is ingested, it can lower your blood pressure. Another one that may be obvious is smoking, right? So number three, if you quit smoking, it can lower your blood pressure approximately, depending on the person, by um, four, as little as four points, but also as much as 17 points. So again, it ranges. And in some people, the diastolic pressure, blood pressure will go from two to 12 points. So a wide range, depending on the person, how much um, your blood pressure will lower, but there's um, a squid and smoking associated with lower blood pressure as well. Other things that can lower your blood pressure, number four, is exercise. So aerobic exercise, especially running, walking, dancing, swimming, getting 90 to 150 minutes a week can lower your blood pressure by five to eight points. So by engaging in aerobic exercise, like I mentioned, running, walking, dancing, swimming, anything that increases your heart rate, that can lower your blood pressure as long as you're doing it regularly, 90 to 150 minutes a week. Um, so that's um, three to five times 30 minutes a day will lower your blood pressure five to eight points. Now, the last one is stress management and how much it lowers will depend on what you're doing and how much stress you started off with. But reducing stress also lowers your blood pressure. Um, there's no way to completely eliminate stress from a life, but there's a way to do things regularly to manage, make your body as prepared as possible to manage stress. So things like meditation, prayer, walking, um, you know, yoga, many different things that can be incorporated into your daily routine can help to reduce stress levels, reduce cortisol levels in the body so that your blood pressure stays at a, at a good place. So those are the five things healthy nutrition, which typically results in weight loss, limiting alcohol, avoiding tobacco use, reducing stress, increasing exercise, doing all these things will lower blood pressure from minimum of four points to as much as 20 points or more. So now let's compare with medication, right? Oh, so before we talk about medicines, the points it lowers by, um, up, it lowers both the top and bottom numbers. So your systolic and diastolic blood pressure at both, uh, at both blood pressure readings are impacted. So for example, if you lose about 10 pounds, let's say you started at 140 over 90, you lost 10 pounds, your blood pressure could go down to 135 over 85. And um, you, now you add like exercise and maybe three to five times a week, and then it goes down to 130 over 80. Maybe you add limiting salt, then it goes down to 125 over 75. So you can see the more things you do, the lower your blood pressure will get. And it will depend on the person, right? These are approximate numbers. So some people get even larger changes in their blood pressure depending on the intervention. 
Okay, so compared to medication, so there was a research, um, there was an analysis of 354 randomized trials. So that included 56,000 patients. And they looked at all like the, the five main categories of blood pressure medications. So blood pressure medications have are in categories. So there could be multiple medicines in one category. So they were looking at the categories. And what they found was there's an average reduction of blood pressure by 9.1 mercury millimeters per mercury for systolic and 5.5 milli millimeters per mercury for diastolic blood pressure when they did the standard dose. So pretty much all the blood pressure medicines lowered blood pressure about the same. So let's just approximately um, rounded up to nine points for systolic and five points for diastolic when they took a standard dose of blood pressure medicines. If a person did a half dose, then it lowered it by seven points and then by four points for the bottom number. And if people were taking three drugs at half standard dose, it lowered it by 20 points for the systolic of the top number and 11 points for diastolic of the bottom number. So what that's telling us is, you know, lifestyle changes can be as good as medicine in lowering blood pressure. Because if one medicine at standard dose lowers your blood pressure by 10 um, points for the top number or five points for the bottom number, you can get similar results with, say, eating a healthy diet with um, lots of um, vegetables, whole grains, um, whole foods, or with lowering your sodium content or with potassium or increasing your potassium content. So the idea here is, you know, a lot of times we treat medicines and we track it. Oh, did I take my medicine today and all of that? But we don't track how many servings of vegetables did I have today? How many servings of fruit did I have today? How much sodium did I have today? And things like that. And by for people that want to reduce their dependence on medications, of course, you want to absolutely work with your doctor if you're doing anything like this. But you can start to track things like that, the lifestyle behaviors, and focus more intentionally on those lifestyle behaviors. And then working with your doctor, you can start to lower your dependence on medications. So if you're in the Houston area and you're looking for a doctor who is proactive about your health, well, we're here for you at In Touch Primary Care. You can learn more about our services and how you, we can help you by visiting our website, intouchprimarycare.com, or you can call us at 713-280-9985. But imagine that you start tracking. You start tracking how many servings of vegetables you're getting or what your sodium intake is or how much exercise you're getting or, you know, limiting you, the alcohol, or you seek help and you quit smoking, and you start tracking what that does to your blood pressure. Not in addition to, if you're taking medications, please do not stop your medications. While I'm a doctor, I'm not your doctor, you would need to work with your doctor to figure that out. But tracking these things can be really helpful, and then you can take that with your doctor and figure out exactly how you want, you know, what to do to continue to lower your blood pressure safely. So if you know anyone that will benefit from this, please share this episode with them. And um, until next week, Wednesday, I hope this has been helpful. I will see you there then. Mm -hmm.